Living with a Disability with your host, David Humphreys. Hello and welcome to Living with a Disability. I'm your host, David Humphreys. On today's show, we will be talking about acquired brain injury. June is Acquired, acquired Brain Injury Month. So let's begin. I have Chris Peacock with me, who's going to talk about brain training. Welcome, Chris. Thanks. And thank you, thank you for me. joining us for our inaugural show. My pleasure. So can, we, can you tell me a little bit about the, the training that you do? Sure. So this is, um, it's called uh, Neurooptimal Neurofeedback, and it's a uh, brain training uh, program that works uh, directly with the uh, central uh, nervous system. And so it's um, really reading the electrical activity in the brain and, um, and letting the person uh, know or their, their brain know when uh, it's not uh, working as efficiently as it, uh, as it could. And uh, when that happens, then the brain starts to uh, reset itself. So it's all happening at an electrical level, and it's uh, technology-based uh, brain training. Can you, can you tell me why you got involved in doing it? Sure. Um, initially, I uh, got my first system uh, back in uh, 2012 because our uh, son has uh, ADHD and uh, some other um, issues that he was uh, dealing with, and we tried all sorts of things and uh, were introduced to uh, uh, Neurooptimal, and um, it, really, uh, it really helped all of us. We were all doing uh, sessions, and uh, it uh, helped his nervous system uh, calm, and uh, all of us as well, so that um, uh, he was less stressed, we were less stressed, and um, he was able to... Um, uh, function much uh, much more easily um, after uh, after a number of uh, sessions and then and then I was uh, laid off from my job and decided I would like to help other uh, other people and other families and here I am so how long have you been doing it since you were laid off yeah as a business job? I've yeah. been uh, it's been just over uh, five years now so and how long are the sessions that you Oh, um, the session itself is uh, is 33 minutes, and then um, there's about uh, 10, uh, 10 or 12 minutes to get people uh, connected up um, and disconnected, because people are connected to um, the uh, the system with five sensors on their uh, on their head and ears, and then that's what's reading the electrical activity in the brain. So, what group of people would you say should try this therapy? Or this trainings? Well, I always say anyone, anyone with a brain can uh, can benefit for sure. Um, but it's uh, it uh, primarily uh, anyone whose uh, central nervous system is kind of out of uh, out of balance, um, and that can cut across um, a whole myriad of uh, of things. So um, I see lots of people who are dealing with symptoms uh, related to uh, anxiety which means that their nervous system is kind of stuck in a uh, in an over aroused uh, uh, state and this just helps to uh, to calm it down and as uh, as our nervous system calms down then all sorts of things start to uh, to change that um, we come become less sensitive to uh, light and to noise uh, we are less tired, we can focus and uh, concentrate more easily, maybe sleep improves, headaches might uh, come down. Uh, some people have you know, thoughts that sort of go over and over in their, uh, in their head and that starts to, uh, uh, to come down. So all sorts of things can change. And, and in relation to uh, acquired brain injury, uh, those might be some of the things that change as the central nervous system settles uh, down or becomes more balanced. Um, and also what changes is, uh, is people's um, ability to, to cope with their symptoms more uh, easily. So uh, it helps us be more resilient because when we're dealing with brain injury, there's a lot of ups and ups and downs and this helps us sort of weather those uh, a lot more easily. So I want to thank you for joining us for our inaugural show and mm -hmm. thank you for being here. Thank you and we'll congratulations. Be back. 
we will be back with Vista Services in our next segment. Join us. Hi, it's Dave, and I'm back here at Living with a Disability with Tammy from Vista Services Brain Injury Program. Hi. Hi, Tammy, and welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So I had the luxury of joining you on Wednesday at your annual Brain Injury Awareness Day. Can you tell us how that started? Um, Vista Center Brain Injury Services started um, our Brain Injury Awareness Day 11 years ago as a way to... Um, bring awareness and uh, education about brain injury and different aspects of brain injury to the uh, survivors, uh, caregivers, our staff, and community in general. I can tell you that my favorite part of that and being able to be there was your keynote speaker. He was a great speaker, um, former Ottawa senator. He, he, he inspired me. You know, the whole format that we've tried to have for the day is to end the day with an, a, a story that will inspire people, leave people feeling good. Yeah, you know, living with a brain injury has challenges. It can, you know, be tough, uh, as all of our speakers have, you know, can attest to. But it's always nice to have that, you know, to, that person to leave you uh, feeling good and walking out thinking, yeah, you know, it, there is hope. So since you've been in, in this industry, because I know you've been in it a while, can you tell us some of the success stories and, and stories and things you've done in the brain injury community? Uh, oh, well, there, there's a lot of success stories. I say when, when I started uh, 20 years ago, uh, yeah, it's been 20 years, um, people uh, who, who had a brain injury were, were told that, you know, two years post-injury, that's as good as it's going to get, you know, that's as much as you're going to re recover. Uh, but with research and neuroplasticity and stuff, you know, we've been able to work with clients, at, you know, to longer than two years and, you know, increase independence, teach functional living skills, you know, become members of the community, help them find uh, groups that are of their interest, you know, social groups, go back to school, go back to work, you know. So can you tell me some of the programs at, at, at the Vista Center? Vista Center Brain Injury Services, we started uh, uh, in 1985 with a, a residential program that's uh, supervised 24 hours a day uh, and uh, per, is a home to five, uh, to five individuals with an acquired brain injury. We have um, our Supported Independent Living Program, Outreach Services, which started in 1992. And that provides support to individuals living in their own environment, living in their uh, own apartment, some with families by themselves. And that's kind of helping with the day-to-day -day things, you know, your scheduling, your organizing, your budgeting, how to, you know, relearning skills of cooking and uh, uh, memory and making sure you get to where you have to go. And uh, we also, uh, since 2005, have uh, adult day programs, which is a social leisure program for individuals with an acquired brain injury who, um, it's a place to come, it's safe, they know uh, activities, it's very participant driven, uh, and they do all kinds of things. Um, there's art, uh, we have uh, a fitness component, there's cognitive components. Um, we also run support groups. We have an, an adjustment to brain injury support group for survivors. And uh, we run um, uh, two or three times a year an anger management program as well. So what do you see going on in the future for your programs and your, your services? What's next? What's, oh, well, we have, <laughs> what's next is um, uh, hope, you know, we would like to, I would like to expand into more um, uh, tele, you know, kind of like telemedicine, telehealth thing, you know, doing it via Skype, videotape. You know, there's a lot of people living in remote communities, running groups, even, you know, to per, that can't attend programs or, or we can't get to would be uh, uh, exciting. Um, expanding our programs by running more groups, uh, the cooking groups, uh, things like that. It's, would be nice, uh, and also just expanding the service to, to more people, more residential. Uh, you know, housing is housing is huge. The, there's lack of housing. I want to take this time to thank you for being part of our inaugural show, and thank you very much for coming, Tammy. Thank you for having me. 
This is Dave Humphreys. Join me next where I have two life stories in our next two segments. That's coming up on Living with a Disability. This is Living with a Disability and I'm Dave Humphreys. My next two segments are life stories. So let's start. I'm joined by Cheryl and Danica Hoffelmeyer to hear their Yeah, Toffelmeyer. Toffelmeyer <laughs> to hear their story. Welcome to the show, Cheryl. Thank Welcome you. to the show, Thank Danica. Thank you for having us. So let's begin. Can you tell us about your life before your the brain injury? Uh, yes. Um, we were a family of four. Um, I, my husband and I had been married almost 24 years at the time of the accident. Um, we have two daughters, uh, our oldest daughter, Miranda, and Danica is our youngest. And um, it was um, the Monday, Easter Monday of 2016. Um, my family, Danica and her dad and our puppy were coming back from uh, Northern Ontario after having some time with our family up there for Easter. Um, and a driver came across the road and head on into my family. Um, my husband was killed instantly and Danica was pulled from the wreck with no vitals um, and not much hope um, when we came back after a six hour trip back, my other daughter and I, because um, uh, we were following them back the next day, um, we were told that Danica was, if she survived, would be in a vegetative state. Um, I refuse to believe it. Um, and uh, here we are today, three years after the accident, um, and she has done some amazing progress. Um, so before, the, before this, we were your typical normal family um, with young adult daughters that were enjoying life, and um, uh, we were very close-knit family. We did an awful lot of stuff together. Um, my kids still like to hang around with us and hold our hands and, you know, have dinner with us. And uh, now it's, uh, it's Danica and I, and my oldest daughter, of course, has now got, like, she's moved out. She's on her own doing her, her thing, too, but she's supporting us as much as she can. And um, we are fighting to get Danica back to a place where she can uh, live independently and uh, function and... Uh, have her life back. So earlier this month, I joined you at an event. Can we talk about how that event went and how it, how surprised you, you were? I was very surprised. Um, what I've learned over this last three years is people have come out of the woodwork, complete strangers that have helped. Um, uh, we actually have had two events done for us. Uh, the last one that you mentioned a few weeks ago was called Dinner for Danica, and it was put on by um, a local group that I had no knowledge of. They just, out of the blue, offered to do this dinner for us, and they raised about $3,800 to help us put a deck in so that we can bring Danica home. Um, previous to that, a year ago in April of 2018, I guess it would be, I've lost the years. Um, a motorcycle group um, put on a huge fundraiser for us and raised basically almost half a van um, for us. Um, and again, it's just complete strangers that hear about our story and want to help us and it's a huge, huge support. Um, uh, it just helps in so many ways and it encourages us too. So you sent us a picture of her birthday, her latest birthday. Do we have that picture? Can I have it up on the screen, please? Okay. Um, so, can you tell us how that was for you? I know that it's been Do you wrong. want to talk to that? How was your birthday? Bring your mic up. Good. And do you remember what year, how, how old are you? 24. Oh, not quite. You're going into your 24. 23. Yes. And so since your accident, Danica, yeah. what is your life, what, is, what, what has changed? I have a lot of rehab. But it's helping you because yeah. um, I, I, I've had the luxury of getting to know you yeah. over the past couple of years. And I'm very impressed in how yeah. you've, you've progressed from what yeah. the doctor said to what you are now. Um, I want to yeah. take this time to thank both of you for coming. and. Mm -hmm. It's great to have you here, and we'll be, we'll, we'll, as you know, I'll be there to support you, and our, and, and my company will. 
we, we, we are glad you were able to join us for Living with a Disability. Yes, thank you. Thank you for having us. Joining me for the last segment of our first show is somebody very close to my heart, the White family. The White family went through a dramatic change in their life a few years ago. Joining me is John White and Dylan White. Nice to be Welcome, here. Welcome, John, and thank you for being here. Well, thank you for having us. It's a, a pleasure. So I know you and I have, you, me and Dylan have a, a relationship because of you being my former high school teacher, but with that relationship, I know when the incident happened, I took it hard. We all took it hard. Can you tell us about the incident and how Dylan was before the, inc before the brain injury? Well, Dylan was like any other young man of his age. Uh, finished high school, was working in construction, uh, looking maybe even to go out on his own. He had, him and I had talked about it. And uh, just a great, uh, a great look on life. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, Dylan, I know I know something that's very special about you is you love football. You had you had a you had a wife of football. I know this because of our personal relationship. But what do you think about the Red Blacks? And what do you what what is? They're your favorite team, right? <laughs> I'm the Ottawa Senators for sure. Yes, I know you love your yeah. Senators. Yeah. But to get back to our, our topic, yeah. can you tell me the story of Dylan and what happened? So yes, Dylan and a group of, uh, of his friends were together and uh, he slipped and fell. Of course, it was of, of great height that he had fallen. When you see an accident of that magnitude and, and like Danica before us, um, you you just wonder what kind of hope and what kind of uh, what's going to be for them. What's their life going to be like? How is this going to to uh, affect everybody involved? And uh, I think that was one of the biggest things. But uh, as as time went on and as we we progressed through the, you know his healing and uh, him getting well, it's amazing what you see. It's it's the the resilience. In, in their wanting to get better and wanting to become strong and wanting to have a, an important life and a life that is meaningful to them. Uh, it's just incredible, Dave, that uh, what, what you see within their own hearts and souls. Yeah. So I know there's a group of you that are trying to build a, a home yeah. Can you talk about that for a bit? Yeah, it's in its infancy. Uh, this was a thought that was, uh, you know, conjured up, uh, you know, a group of people. It's, it was certainly not the first ones, and uh, but we, we, you know, this is uh, something we want to get done, and uh, so it is in its infancy, and we're starting to uh, start putting puzzles, pieces of the puzzles together, getting people in the right places, and uh, people to help organize and get this done, and we're looking for, of course, the, uh, it's going to be in the east end of Ottawa, or at least we're looking at those locations. And uh, it's like I say, it's in its infancy, and uh, as school winds down, uh, then of course we'll uh, we'll start picking up on this, and uh, and the bike clubs are are you know like uh, we're going to be having another event with uh, with the bike uh, uh, group. Uh, all my brothers and sisters who ride, uh, in more information is coming, and it's going to be uh, again another. Uh, it's going to be now. So there's going to be this going into a, a new home for not just one or two, but can house possibly three or four. So uh, again, it's all in the making and we're, we're you know, just in its infancy. So. so so I know in August there will be an event, uh, my mother company I work for yes, is hosting an event called Build the Build a Dream Home for Acquired Brain Injury on the 26th. And as you know, I'm a very big supporter of you guys. Yeah, and that, so that, that was my way of giving back to you, but there's other news that that is that you have a, a GoFundMe page that you launched. Yeah, launch we open up a GoFundMe page, again, this in its infancy, to start the awareness and start uh, this project off. Um, there are other, uh, other avenues we're looking down, and uh, again, another thing we're going to be looking to confirm and get set up. And uh, So uh, with a group of people and a group of uh, uh, great individuals in this community that, that believe that this is, uh, you know, we need residents for these people, uh, for these young folks, because uh, as it's 
it stands right now, the, there is hardly very much or very anything of residencies, right? So, so, so this question's for you, Dylan. Um, so you met Danica through this situation. You guys are really good friends now? She, she's, she's, um, uh, I've had a lot of time to talk to, with her and her mom, and she's a great person. Your life's changed a lot, but I have to say, you've taken what happened to you and made your life better, and I'm extremely proud of you. They draw inspiration from one another, and that's, that's crucial. Yeah. Yeah. So, is there anything else you want to tell our community about brain injury or awareness? Um, you know, it, it happens all the time. It, it, the, the brain injury, you know, there's so many people that are affected by this, and I just want everybody out there to know that these folks, no matter how grim it might look, keep looking upward, keep looking towards the availability of all this, uh, everything that's put in place to help these folks because these lives are by far over and that they have an amazing future ahead of them and with more people getting involved and ensuring that these opportunities are out there for them, it's, uh, it's perfect. So I just, I wanted to say personally, thank you very much for being here. Thank you for all of your support to me over the years. And uh, I wanted to say to Dylan, I'm extremely proud to see where you are today. Well, David, I want to say to you, thank you so much for being part of my life and uh, the great days we had at high school and what you did and how you've come forth to be the man that you are is incredible. And thank you so much for bringing this awareness. For, for us up front. So thank you guys. This is Dave Humphreys for Living with a Disability. Hope we'll see you next time.